All right, now we are learning, let's learn a, a, a mimer in the um, a, a Hasidic discourse, an essay, in the book which is called the Huti Torah, big thick book. And, um, and we already learned a lot about Rosh Hashanah, how Rosh Hashanah is a choosing, choosing God and that God should choose us. We talked about this level of choice and that God... Become, we, we choose God as our king, and then God chooses up as, us as his people, and what exactly that means, and how it is that uh, what the shofar does, when we sound the shofar, that it awakens the inner inner aspect of the Jewish soul, which the Jewish soul, the essence of it is before the world, before the Torah. Huh? So it's like the source of all reality, source of all meaning, the source of the source of um, of um, how do you say of the of, of life. That doesn't make any sense, but that's what we're saying over there. That the Jewish people, <clears throat> God put the world in our hands. In other words, we're not part of the world. The world, so to speak, is part of us. That's the way it was with Adam. Right, Adam. Adam was supposed to have done his job. That's why God made Adam to improve the world, or unfortunately, the opposite. That's what he he chose the opposite because God wants her to be free choice. Okay, but when a person really does get to the realization that he's being created by God, he's being created by, by God for a purpose, and it's a big gift. And even more, God is giving us uh, 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 encouragement and help to do this purpose. So suddenly, every fiber of our being is meaningful, indispensable. We're not just, you know, just little numbers in, in, in some census or something. You know? To some people, I mean, a lot of people think that's what's going on now. It could really be, because it doesn't make any sense, that there's these people that are saying... There's just too many people in the world. It's an old theory. It's an old theory. I think I've told you about this before. I heard it. It's an argument. It's an old theory by economists and other. There's too many people in the world, and because of that, everybody's going to die. There's just we just overdid it, and there's not going to be a food for anybody. So it's like you know a person who has a leg with has gangrene or something like that. So you have to cut it off in order to save the rest of the body. So that's what really there's people that are saying it's an old theory. I forget who the one who developed it was, but <clears throat> that there's just too many people in the world. So you get to, so what does that mean? It means that people are just sort of numbers. You know, there's a lot of people that are dispensable. Dispensable people. That's what basically all these big conquerors, you know, Genghis Khan and all these other people, they thought there's just whole whole communities of people that are just dispensable. And here the Hasidut and Judaism is telling us exactly the opposite. That every human being, no matter who he is, no matter where he is, no matter what his IQ is, no matter what his state is, even if his last moments of his life, that every human being is being created by God and is a gift of God and is important. So, okay, that's how look at others. What about looking at ourselves? So if you look at yourself, you say, I am, I'm, I'm being created by God. And this, why would God create me? You know, what, what does he get out of creating me? What can I do, you know? I can understand why he creates like, you know, famous people, and, you know, big, but then you start to look at the famous people and you start to realize, you know, really, I mean, what really do they do? You know, these famous people. So they, he knows how to play piano really well. And he knows how to be a sports guy really well and he knows how to be you know but essentially like you know all these people you know and, and they always realize <laughs> and the historians come and they say you know everybody thinks this guy was a great person he was a really evil despot and just a murderer and a mass murderer and napoleon is the example right he's revered and he has a special tomb in france and he was this and the, the guy was just a, a, a debauched maniac Murder, mass murder. Who knows how many people he caused to be killed? Right? So we look at these people, suddenly you start to think, once again, is it really that important what people think about me? 
It certainly is important. There's no doubt about it. But is that what life really is about? About, you know, if I get my name down or something like that. You get these communist leaders that they kill like, you know, million, they say, uh, chain, uh, what's his name? Mao Zedong killed them. 10, 100 million people. There's all sorts of different, nobody knows to this day how many killed. But everybody agrees it's more than 50 million. So I have 50 million, 100 million. It's the same thing with the Holocaust. Right? The, the Nazis did not get 6 million. They only killed 1 million. I mean, every human being is important. Every human being is important. And, okay, now let's look at ourselves. When I feel that I'm being created by God, so suddenly I sort of have to readjust my whole business. You know, my, why am I being created by, I'm not thinking that that's special, you know, I'm not that special. Maybe I'm making a mistake. Maybe I'm like Sigmund Freud, you know, just leading a whole generation of lemmings into the sea, you know, just, just destroying generations and generations of, of people taking away meaning from everybody. Who knows? You know, maybe so. Why should I be created? And you know, what's the point? And so the answer is, is that first of all, God has his 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 calculations. And number two, you're created to do what it says in the Torah. And if you do what it says in the Torah, somehow or other, you're improving the whole entire creation. You're improving the whole entire creation. And it's not in measurable terms like human beings measure right that somehow or other napoleon is worth more than all the i don't know how many 10 million frenchmen that he killed or something like that or the other people he killed well, however people he, right somehow or other this guy is worth more than the other guy it's not so there are some people that are good at being leaders there's some people that are good at, but it doesn't make one person more valuable because we're measuring in god's terms and when you look at the world from god's terms and we're not talking about going to heaven or hell or we're not talking about that <clears throat> we're talking about every moment so suddenly we realize God is really creating me so it must be that the world is working on a whole different system of values than what I think <clears throat> and I'm being created by some sort of value system from God that I and it doesn't make any difference who I am every person could say somehow or other God values me I have, could have a lower IQ than everybody else. Somebody is not um, uh, muted over here. One second, and I have to. Nothing personal, anyone. Nothing personal. I'm gonna have to mute some people. There we go. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So when a person does find out and figure <clears throat> that he is being created by God, and that I'm gonna do what it says in the Torah, and that will me make the relationship between me and God <clears throat> and between God and me enhanced so you feel happy and you also feel happy even if you messed things up totally in the past because I'm alive I can change I can change I can reorient myself and that's the whole idea what Hasidus wants to bring the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov want to bring the importance of every moment, of every place, of every human. <clears throat> and this begins with the Jews. The Jews are, were chosen. We're the chosen people. We're chosen to teach the world this. In other words, go according to God's standards, not according to human standards. I mean, human standards are a good indication of what God thinks, but certainly not. I mean, if, it, if things went according to what humans thought, so Moses would have been deposed. King David for sure would have been deposed. There wouldn't be any prophets. The Jews never listened to the prophets, right? Isaiah and, and, and Ezekiel and all these people. <clears throat> they never listened to you, uh, you know, Jeremy, Jeremiah and Hosea, all of them, one after the other, right? We, we about about uh, uh, Jonah, the prophet Jonah, that he knew the Jews weren't going to listen to him. And he knew that the Gentiles would listen to them. <clears throat> so all these prophets, the Jews didn't want him. Right? The Jews want, so if we want to we'll go according to what people think, the world would really be in a bad situation. I mean, the Jews would not have left Egypt and they wouldn't have received the Torah and they sure wouldn't have gone into the land of Israel. There wouldn't be any Jewish people today. It would have just been uh, this. But there's always some Jews that say, okay, listen, people think that it's not worthwhile being a Jew because you get destroyed and you get burned and you get the, the, the driven from countries and there's Holocaust and things like that. But for some reason, God thinks that it is good. I mean, that's what all the prophets say. So what is this? What is this new value system that we're going according to? 
<clears throat> just one more thing. When a person really does catch on to this value system that is looking from God's point of view, so it makes everything positive, right? Makes everything positive. And if you dig down deep enough into your personality, you'll find diamonds there. And they're, they're there. Humans are human beings. Man is good. So when we find this, you feel happy. It's a happiness that can't be taken from you. Even to the last moment of a person's life, and I mean, face it, we all, our lives have limits. Even the last moment of your life, if you're still alive, you got a cause to be happy. Because God, the creator of the whole universe, is personally creating you right now. And it could be just to have positive thoughts, that's all. The only one that really touches on this is, uh, I mean, except in, you know, in, in Hasidut Chabad, is Professor Viktor Frankl. And he is a scientist and a, you know, a doctor, a professor, you know, and, and all, you know, and he was a neurologist and a brain surgeon. And he was a, you know, a, a professor in philosophy, uh, had a philosophy degree. And he says exactly this, but he doesn't say it in religious terms at all. He says, that's the essence of human personality and human, how do you say, drives is this drive for this feeling a meaning that I'm, I'm here for some reason and the torah gives this okay but you always have you always have to readjust ourselves because god created us in such a way that we don't feel this god created us in such a way that we are very <clears throat> uh the, the subject to peer pressure and we forget about God totally. What everybody thinks about me, that's my value. Okay, so now let's learn. We're talking about what is true happiness. Now we're getting to it. Ready? Here we go. This is a mimer about, excuse me, I'm going to mute some people. I'm, I'm not, nothing personal. Okay. What, what is happiness? That's the thing. Is. Happiness is the holiday of Sukkot. The whole Sukkot is called Zman Simchatenu, the time of happiness. And one of the things that made everybody really happy there on Sukkot was that there was the water drawing ceremony. The water drawing ceremony. <clears throat> Which is an interesting thing, but he's not going to talk about that here. The commandment was to pour water on the altar every day of Sukkot. Pour water. There was a special funnel in the corner of the altar. What's this? What's this? What's this? What is going on over? What is this? There's a special funnel in the uh, on the top of the altar. There's an altar in the holy temple, and they would pour water. There was being very happy. They would pour the water into the thing, and the Jews they made the rabbis instituted that there should be a special happiness in drawing the water, just drawing the water. There was a special stream that they drew the water from. They made a whole big ceremony out of it. And the reason they made the whole big ceremony out of it was because the people that opposed the rabbis said that it's not a commandment to pour, even to pour the water, because it doesn't say in the Torah. It's just hinted at in the Torah. And they said, and going against the rabbis is the source of confusion and sadness in the world, the rabbis. The rabbis, the God gave the Torah purposely, purposely so that the rabbis, of course, there's qualifications. Who can be a rabbi? But nevertheless, the rabbis have to explain it. That's in the Talmud. So the rabbis determined that there's this water pouring ceremony, and it's from the Torah, a Torah commandment. In the time of the temple, they would pour the water down this thing. And because there was opposition, it's from the tzedukim. They op opposed it. There was a group, anyway, that they opposed the rabbis. That was their whole big thing, opposing the rabbis. <clears throat> Eventually, that morphed into the Christians, but they, they opposed the rabbis. And their whole thing was is that everybody's a rabbi. Everybody makes up their own thing. And we decided that there is no such, it doesn't say in the Bible that there's a water drawing ceremony or water pouring ceremony. So they said, there's no commandment. So the rabbi said, not only is there a water pouring ceremony, which that's really hinted at in the Torah, but there's also a water drawing ceremony, which that's not hinted at at all in the five books of Moses. But it is hinted at in the book of Isaiah. You will draw water in joy 
from the wellsprings of salvation. Now, I, this is from Isaiah. Now, Isaiah, he came like in the middle of the first temple. So they were already drawing this water and pouring it before he came along. But nevertheless, this is the, the where they got the hint from. He may behold, but call us the whole entire year. One second. Let's make this a little bit bigger here so that I can read it. Make it reader friendly. <clears throat> okay, so Isaiah said, Ushabdi, you will draw water with joy, Mimayane Yeshua from the wellsprings of salvation. He may behold, be call Ashana in the whole year. Haya Nisu Hayayan. They used to pour water, wine, I'm sorry, they would pour water on the altar. On the altar, on the corner of the altar, it was like the left hand corner when you went. But if there were two funnels, one funnel was had a sort of a, uh, a bigger hole in it that went down, and they would pour wine in it every year, every day. They would pour wine every day. And there was also right next to it another funnel that had a sort of a smaller hole because water is less dense than wine, so it flows down faster. <clears throat> and that they use only seven days of the year, and that's on the days of Sukkot, and they pour water. The whole entire year, they would pour wine on the altar. But whom, of course, this is clearly written in the five books of Moses. Behedya, clearly. many This is a lot of times. But in the seven days of the holiday of Sukkot, there was also Kam Nisu Hamayim. It was also pouring water on the altar in this funnel. Call a Shiva Yamim all the seven days of the holiday. But this is only a law, the Moshe to Moshe Misina. It's not written clearly in the Torah. This is what's called the Halacha, the Moshe Misina. These were laws that were given to Moses on Mount Sinai and passed down. There are a lot of laws like that. I mean, the most outstanding one is the Tefillin. Tefillin doesn't say anywhere in. The Torah, you have to put, there's no word tefillin. It says you have to put a, a sign on your, on your, uh, between your eyes. Totofot beinenecha, some totofot you have to put on your, and it doesn't explain where you have to put it and what they are. And Moses, we see from God that the tefillin have to be black and they have to be square and they have to have four paragraphs in them and they have to be written exact way. All these things were received from Moses. That's all brought down in the Talmud. Moses was up there 40 days, right? 40 days he was on Mount Sinai. So it says God told him all of the, the explanations of the Torah. Oh, so then it says, This is a law of Moshe. It's not written clearly, this idea of pouring water. the Only from the rabbis, some hua akrai. They, re, they put it on certain, or they relied it on certain sentences. If there are certain senses with the, the, the sacrifices that they brought, there's a few words that are changed. According to the letters that are changed, it comes out the word mayim, mem, yud, mem. Right? And, and then and from that, they learn out that they pour the... Ushiva samayim, the pouring of the water was besimcha gadola, was tremendous happiness. Al shame, like, like it says in the sentence, ushavta mayim basasan, you should pour water in joy. Uchumabur, like it's written in Masechet Sota, in the tractate of Sukkah, in the end of the fourth chapter and the beginning of the fifth chapter. Right? Sof perik dalit, rosh perik he. The Yeshlav, and we have to understand the Tom, the reason. Lama eno meforish, why does this law not appear clearly in the Torah? Uh, even tefillin, like we said, the word tefillin doesn't appear, but it does say you have to put a sign on your arm and totafot between your eyes, right? So it's, it's, there's a hint that you have to do something. A mezuzah says you have to put it on the mezuzah of your It doesn't say what a mezuzah is, but at least it says that there is a mezuzah. Such a thing as a mezuzah. A mezuzah is that, that little scroll that you put on your door. So it says that there is such a thing. <clears throat> and here this pouring of the water is not even said, it's not even said that in a hint. It's just, it's, it's in a very, you have to really, you know, twist your mind in order to figure out where this is. So it says it's a law from Moses. 
Moses brought the law down and he showed where it's at the end of these words, there's an extra letter. He may be old, but first of all, Tzorich Lahav, and we have to understand, you want to understand what's the water and what's so happy about water. Why in the world are they pouring water there? Just be happy. Be happy all the time. There's a holiday, be happy. No, they're happy, especially when they pour the water. They're happy. In a bowl, first of all, we have to understand. Let's understand that what they poured water every day on the altar. And water, it says, I gave my, it's a whole thing in, in the book of Judges. One of the judges says, anyway, that it's a, they bring us a metaphor. He says, I am like the, the grapes. I, I gave from my wine that makes God and man happy. My wine. Okay, so wine, we can understand it. So wine makes a person happy, right? Wine can make a person happy anyways, right? See, people drink wine. They, they, they sing. Uh, they sing. They're all together. They're camaraderie. They sing. Beyot you do it because it's known to Bina, Ema Banim, Hia Simcha. Where does joy come from? Joy comes from understanding. Happiness comes from understanding. How does happiness come from understanding? Let's say somebody gives you a, a, a million dollars. You just want a million dollars. Oh, this is really great. It gives you certificates. You want a million dollars. Happy. Someone comes over and says, it's a lie. It's not. It's stolen money. Right? Don't touch that money. It's got disease corona it's got on it right all of a sudden you're not happy anymore what happened all oh, you you just heard things it's just how you understand your understanding determines whether you're happy or not when you understand the thing is valuable you understand the thing is yours you understand that a thing is is some sort of useful to you you understand and it's good and it's valuable so then you're happy when you get it but if you don't understand happiness is the source of understanding it, and then so, happiness the sort of the happiness comes from understanding. That's Bina. Okay, so let's understand what is wine. Wine, it says, makes people and God happy. What does it mean God will see? Because it, it's known that Bina, where does happiness come from? Happiness comes from what's called understanding. It says the mother of the sons. Banim is aim is uh, is mother there's what there's ten spherot, the top of the ten spherot, the ten aspects of the soul. The highest aspect is what's called chachma. That's like faith. That's faith. That's like, and below that is bina. That's understanding. But right? you have faith that God exists, and now let's try to understand that. So that's once you understand something, then there's happiness. You understand how it's good for me. You understand that it's true. It says the mother of the sons. This is joy. Kamoshi Kutu, like it says, Ema Bani Smecha. Ki, Hasimchas, joy is revealed from what's concealed. Lochen, therefore, Nimshach Tavka, it comes from Bina, it comes from understanding. That Bina is, Kishem Mevi, no Masig, Talumos, Chachma, when you understand what is this wisdom, Shen Nimshach, Begila, that's drawn down in a revealed way, Bahavana Vahasaga Mamash, you understand something, Shem Mesig, Otobatov, you understand it well. As yes, simcha, then you are happy. Right? You go up to someone that you, what is your name? My name is uh, Joe Groys. Mr. Groys, you live at uh, 565 Elm Street. Yes, you just won $25 million in the lottery. Sign here. One minute, one minute. I'm not signing nothing. Oh, but you, you just got good news. Why, why aren't you happy? Why aren't you happy? How do I know it's true? How do you know what you're saying? How do I know that you're selling the truth? I don't know what I'm signing over here. Just one second. I want, let me understand this. <clears throat> here you can call my office. How do I know it's not fixed that the office is this? Here, let me, I'll, I'll call information. Give me that number. I'll call information. I want the number of, uh, of the, the lottery service. Here it is. Oh, it's the same number. Look at this. Mm, that's pretty. Can you connect me to the lottery service? We don't do that, sir. You'll have to call yourself. Okay. Calls up. Hello. Did you just send somebody over to me? What's your name? My name is Groys. Elm Street? Yeah. Yep. I won. Yeah. I really won. Yeah. 
I can click them. Really? As soon as you start to understand more and more about this good thing, so then you become happy. Then you become happy. And it can even be in a bad thing, right? A person, God forbid, gets in an automobile accident. <clears throat> it's terrible, worst thing in the world. He totals his car. He was on the way to the, a very important meeting that he had to catch a plane and go. It was a multi-million dollar meeting. And he has to go. And he, the car, he's miserable. Suddenly somebody tells him, man, are you lucky you weren't on that plane? Right? You know, the plane had a crash. It crashed. Everybody's in the hospital. I said, wow, hey, that's pretty good. Right? As soon as he, what did he, he just understood. Right? He so, suddenly realizes, wow, that crash that I had with my car, that I told him my car, that's the best thing that ever happened to me. Understanding, just by understanding. So understanding, when a person understands something well, then he's happy. And it even negates what's bad, could then negates sad things. Masha Enkin, which is not the case, it doesn't understand the thing well. It's concealed. It's not revealed by him. It doesn't receive any happiness at all. <clears throat> So we see this especially in this person, sometimes people happen, a tragedy happens in a person's life and he get, becomes depressed and he just can't. And suddenly, he, let's say there's a lot of people, they go to a, an advisor. A lot of people went by the Rebbe, Mbavich Rebbe. He said a couple of words and all of a sudden everything just, all of his paradigms just changed. And look, because he understood something. Right? Understood something. Ah, that's called Bina. Bina is also called Alma Discasi. It's also called the world is concealed. Why is it world is concealed? Now we're talking, this is, the Rebbe is trying to apply human experience to the ideas of Kabbalah or the other way around, right? In any case, up to now, we've learned that understanding, which is called Bina, which is the second of the 10 spheres, the highest is called Chachma. And the Chachma is like faith. You can't understand anything. And Bina, that's already understanding. You're grasping something that sort of becomes relevant to you. If it's good, then you're happy. It says, but on the other hand, Bina is also called, in Kabbalah, it's called the world of concealment. Like God created the world in six days. Six days, that's how God revealed himself. Revealed. He created six days because that corresponds to the six emotions. What about intellect? That's concealed. The reason why God is creating the world, that's concealed. That's Bina. This is the world to come, going to heaven. That's Bina. Okay, how does it fit in together? We, we said that Bina is revelation. We said, no, we're saying it's, no, it's concealed from us. What's going on? That's the service of the Levites. Because who? The service of the Levites is what's called who? Shemam Shechim, that they draw down from the is who, what's concealed. I know Alma Discasia. Who da atika? It's called atika, atika, the, a high, very high aspect of God, which is in bina, from what's concealed, what's to what's revealed. I know all you day share by means of song. Show you only malayan that they said this. They said, sung the song when the wine was being poured, not that they drank wine. The wine was being poured, which that's the level of bina. That's the love of being. I mean, just think about it one minute. There's a well-known story, right? There were, there were these, uh, the crippled soldiers, the, what do they call it? The, anyway, the wounded soldiers, they, they passed in front of the Rebbe oh, and they were all miserable. And the Rebbe just said a couple of words to all of them. It said, you know, you are, you are not supposed to be called crippled soldiers. You're supposed to be called uh, special soldiers and unique. Mitsuyane Tzal, he said, to be special. And as soon as he said that, he changed for a lot of them, their whole entire outlook. But what did he do? He just revealed the fact. He didn't say, let's look at it this way. He was telling them the fact, but the fact was concealed from them. <clears throat> just understand that we were in the we are in the world, the true meaning, the goodness of the world is concealed from us. It's hidden. And we have to reveal it. So that was the work of the Levites to show how good the world is. But it's concealed. The good is concealed. And just to reveal that, all of a sudden you look at things differently. Right? Like I said in the beginning of the class, we're all being created by God. We're created by God for a purpose. But you have to think, what is, what is God? What does that mean? And what does it mean? I'm being created by God. As soon as you start to understand, it's, you think, well, this is real. This is really happening. I'm really being created. 
by God, and God is creating all the angels and he's creating all these upper worlds, and he's creating me right now, right? That's infinitely good. But that whole way of looking at the world is true, but it's concealed. And so we have to think into it. When we think into it, then we can reveal it. That was what the Levites did. The job of the Levites was to make this understanding of the goodness of God more accessible. And they did this by means of a process which was called singing. And they sang when the water, when the wine was poured on the altar, that's when they sang. That's the idea of wine that makes happy God and people. What does it mean? It brings God to people. Shemevi alokus, that it brings God in this, it reveals. When you're happy, you reveal yourself, right? God to revelation to people. Hainu, namely, al yodei bin, by means of bina. Shemevi no masig, that he understands and he grants the greatness of God. Then titlaev nafshol Hashem, then his soul gets excited about God. That's what wine does. What does wine do? Wine is concealed inside of the grapes. And you squeeze the grapes that comes out wine, comes out uh, b- b- the grape juice, which is very nice. You know, grape juice, uh, if you, and they haven't got problems with sugar or something, that's very good. But if you leave the grape juice alone for a while, then it starts to ferment. And then afterwards, it becomes wine, it becomes alcohol. Wine. It's very, very interesting, right? It, it, I, I heard it's the only fruit that does that. If you take wine, you take grapes and you crush them up and you leave them in a vessel. You leave them in a vessel with the with the, the grapes, the grape, the skins and the liquid. Is the, the skins have the the substance which causes the wine to ferment and it becomes wine, it becomes alcoholic. And you drink it, you become happy, it changes your whole personality. Change your whole personality. It says that's that's physical wine, just like the same thing as physical wine. Shagoram also causes happiness and revelation from the concealment, like it says, Nichnas Yayin Yotzesod. When wine comes in, secrets come out. What's the secrets? What's the inside of everyone? Good. Good. But just to stress this again, I don't think it can be stressed enough. You know, they have all these religions in the world that say that man is basically bad. Man is basically bad. You're evil. And you, you have to, you're cursed. And you can get out of the curse by means of you know, X or Y. And Judaism says, no way. Man is basically good. Man is basically godly. It's being created. It says in the Torah, God saw every, that man is made in God's image. They said that God said that the Noah. Noah was not Jewish. Man is basically good. The problem is the good is very concealed. <clears throat> so what we're talking about happiness is something that's inside of us that just has to be revealed. And the revelation of it, that makes even, that turns the good into happiness. It's revealed. And that's what wine does. Wine is, is concealed inside of the grapes. You crush the grapes and it comes out. Okay. Okay, now we understand a little bit about what is the wine, why the wine was poured, because that caused, the whole idea of wine is revealing what's concealed, and that's the thing of the Levites singing. Singing is also, the singing of the song is inside of you, and suddenly, oh, it comes out, right? Who would dream this person can sing, right? He sings, Hefesh ben Okay, now we've understood a little bit about what it means, the wine pouring commandment in the temple. Now let's understand the water pouring. Now, let's understand the difference between the wine pouring, which is on the whole year, the Bechinas. What's the difference between that and the holidays of happiness, especially Sukkot? Sukkot is called the Zaman of our time of our happiness. Now, you're supposed to be happy all the time. That's why we have the pouring of the wine. Pouring of the wine made happy. Since the temple was destroyed, we can't really be happy. Can't really be happy. And one of the reasons we can't really be happy because there's no Levites that are singing when the wine is poured. There's no wine poured. Wine. But wine made happiness. If so, we have to be happy the whole year. Why is on Sukkot called the time of our happiness? Time of our happiness? 
Shahaya Bahem, there was also, they also poured wine. So how is Sukkot different from any other day of the year? The who come all there are much as this is like a person. When a person is, how do you say, um, aroused, excited, the Sameach and happy. May is a dover from something Alpha Pekin, nevertheless, Yochaliot, it could be Simcha Vipalut, the happiness and the joy by him, the Helen concealed. Mizulaso from others. He's happy deep in his soul. She yet tocho rotsov chedba. The inside of him, he's tremendously happy of a simcha. The anu goliba and kal, and he's not revealed to anyone. Right? It could be something happens, and the person, let's take the example of of winning the lottery, right? Winning the lottery. He doesn't want to show anybody that he's rich. He doesn't want to show, the, right? Mr. Groish, you just won $50 million. Shh. Are you happy? I'm very, very happy. I'm very happy. Listen, let's talk about this later. I'm out of my mind with happiness. But he doesn't want to show it to anybody. He's really happy, right? They really needed that money and he got it, but he's concealing it. It's inside of himself. He's happy. And there's other people that have a positive attitude about life. Right? They have a good positive attitude about life. They're not <clears throat> worried. They're not anxious. He's happy, but it's not revealed to anyone. But when a person gets excited or aroused, then he's old, but he's very, very happy. As I then, near him, and called, then the happiness is revealed to everybody. And he sings and he dances. <clears throat> Barega with his hand, matapech biyad, and he claps his hands. She'ena yochol liyot behester. He can't conceal it anymore. We rove gedulas the simcha from the great happiness. Uh, I mean, the fact is, we we have to believe there is such a thing. I don't know if if you see it nowadays. You know what it is. I mean, you won't see it on television. That's for sure. But because now there's, you know, just. Uh, you know, if you have like a good band, so everybody's really like drugged up or something like that, then they're dancing a rave or something like that. And, uh, but the fact of the matter is that's not real happiness. But let's say that it is. Let's take the let's let's take that example, right? Let's say that it is. He's been a big crowd and they're making a big this and the music and everybody's happy. So he's happy also. He dances and he's this because the music makes him happy and it becomes revealed. It comes out. Oh, now, okay, that happens to be happiness, which is not exactly from a holy side, but nevertheless, that is a property of happiness. If a person is mildly happy, he can conceal the inside. But if a person is really big time happiness, then he dances and he sings, etc. From Rol. Kach Bakalashana also is the whole year. If you get excited about God, I'm a Mali calling that God fills the worlds and he surrounds the worlds and he thinks about it. That's what we're supposed, that's what we're supposed to start the day with. Praying to God. And as we start the day remembering that we're just creations and that we're being created by God and God is infinitely good. When you have that positive feeling about the world, so it makes you happy. Afal became never less than who behelm, it's concealed. Sha'or is simcha that this joy, which you have, you're supposed to have the whole entire year, all the time. Mitalem is concealed in a vessel. The vessel is your personality. Bakli, Magbilon, it's limited. Right, you go, what are you smiling about? I just, you know, happy to be alive. And, and, and just thinking about good things, thinking about the sunset, thinking about my, my grandchildren, thinking about, you know, something good. Thinking about a good thing. Heard a joke yesterday. Joke yesterday, really funny joke. Right? That's why I'm so, why aren't you laughing before? Ah, it's just, you know, it just felt good. All the bud, the Chag of Sukkos and the holiday of Sukkos, Nira Simchat Ayan. Oh, you, God, thinking about God, if you think properly about God, that he's creating me, etc., then it makes you happy the whole year. You're supposed to be positive the whole year. You're in good hands. Don't worry about it. You have a job. You can never be fired from your job. Every moment is important. Just be positive. Right? And you think about this, it makes you feel positive. That's the whole year. You're supposed to have a general, gen, general positive feeling about God. But you're not dancing around and singing. But on the holiday of Sukkos, near a simcha, so you can see the joy to everybody. Shall or bokeh uh, that the light breaks through. How clear the vessel machmas rov gadulas, or because of the great happiness of the joy, the riba gilu yahelim. 
because it is revealed. There's so much happiness. It's revealed from Silman. Why? What's what's so happy about this? The Sim Chazu. This is Barash Gadol. It's at a tremendous noise. Kamosh and Moranin and Moraked and Simcha. They used to have Simcha Beit Hashaiva. They would dance. They would be happy. There was music. The Kain, the Yosem Kain, who Moranin Moraked, the Ruchni is even more. He's happy. In the, physically, he's happy. Spiritual. The Shiros Batishbachos with singing and with praising in front of God, like it says, the Ofanim Baraj God, like it says that there are angels that they are making a big noise to God because they feel how good God is. That's the idea of pouring wine the whole year. And also on Sukkot. Also on Sukkot, they also poured wine. Oh, now we're getting to the water. And Nisuch the pouring water, is only on the holiday of Sukkot. Now, all the holidays, okay, you're supposed to be happy, positive, all the time. The holidays, you're supposed to be even happier. The holidays are Passover and Shavuot. You have to be happy. And also Sukkot. But Sukkot is more than all the other days and more even than all the other holidays. It's called, it's the only holiday that's called the time of our happiness. On the holiday of Sukkot, and there's they do something special there. They pour water on the altar, and one of these funnels that's in the corner of the altar. They pour water. They would pour wine the sefel ze in this funnel, umayim and water in this other funnel. It would go down. It says to this deep place under the. Me'arve shell mayim. There was the, the, this one was with water, poured water. Beniso chayayin, the pouring of the water. This is bina. We just said understanding. Beniso chayayin, the water. This represents a higher level, which that's the level of chach. Ohu gavoa ma'od. This is very very high. Beniso chayayin. Okay, wine makes people happy. How does water make people happy? Why should we be happy with water? More happy than wine. Why? The Indian is like this. That's the difference between the Kohanim and the Levites. Like it says in the Zohar, the Yayan wine comes from the Sitra, the Levia. That wine comes from the aspect of the Levites. The Levites, it says, was power from below to above. They sang. They... The Sitra, the Kohuna, but the side of the Kohanim, that was wine. Salilin Nihirin. I'm sorry, Mayan. No, 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 no. Mayan water, this is Aramaic. This is Aramaic. Mayan, like Mayan Nukun. Water, Salilin Nihirin. It is clear and transparent. Kiteva Hamayim, the nature of water, Sheyordi Mamakum Gavoy, it comes from a high place to a low place. Wine, wine elevates you. You drink wine, it elevates the person. He starts to sing, he starts to jump around, to activates. Water calms you down. Water comes from a high place to a low place. That's like the Kohanim. The Levites, they were like wine. They sang. They lifted their voices. The Kohanim, they were like water. They brought down blessings. Shashpa'a Yeredes, it comes down to the Kohen Gadol, to the high priest, Umisham, and from the high priest, Lakal, according to the other other priests, other priests, not only to other Kohanim, like the rabbis say, Kohen Gadol, Notel Chilek, that the Kohen Gadol, the, the high Kohen, the grand Kohen, he takes the first portion from all the sacrifices whenever he wants to. He was a different, the, the high priest ideally was a totally different type of a person than anybody else in, in, in Israel. He was a different person. The last 40 years, it says that they, that the, the quality descended, but in, originally the Kohen, that was like the, you know, the, the, the highest person, the biggest tzaddik of the generation, that was the high priest. The high, the Kohen Gadol. The Yayan, that's, that's the level of the water. Water, water is the Kohen that comes from above to below. What's there to be happy about? We'll talk about that. Yayan, wine, this is the level of the Levites. Shu Allah, this goes from below a, a low place to a high place. 
this is also to lift up your voice, a rush and a song, a sheer and a noise and a song. Shehu is galus revelation, like we said before, called bali ashir yotzim bashir. It says all those that have song go out with song. It doesn't really mean that. The real meaning is in a mishnah in in Shabbos that your animals are not allowed to work for you. And but if the animal always goes out with a shear, a shear is a, is a ring. If it always goes out with this ring, right, in its nose or around its neck, if it goes out with this ring, then it's permissible for it to go out with a ring, even on Shabbat. But the word shear means a ring. That's a simple meaning. But it also means a song. So it says all bali shear. That's the angels. The angels are song, singing yotzim b'shir. They go out of themselves with the song when they sing, they're like fire. Which is not the case. Water, water is quiet. That's like the koanim, the avdoi b'chashai that they serve God quietly. Just like the level of the koanim is higher than the Levites. Like it says, It says that the Levites they just accompany the koanim. Also, the pouring of the water is a higher level of joy than pouring wine. Huh? Why is that? Why? We'll find out tomorrow. Come tomorrow and we'll learn. God willing, we'll try to finish this. And like I said, tomorrow will be the last classes in the morning because I'm going to be going to the Rebbe. And so I won't be able to give classes in the morning. I don't know when I'm going to be able to give classes at all because it's not, uh, I, I don't have like my own room and my own place and my own this. But I will be sending daily some sort of a message. But you'll have to, everything will be on YouTube. But tomorrow there will be class. I'm just preparing everybody, preparing myself in YouTube. <coughs> so all the classes will be on YouTube. Okay, let's do the <coughs> uh, Sikh of the Rebbe. One second.